Good morning. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is our second event uh, in Women in Cybersecurity with our chapter. For today's event, we have um, Sanas. She's going to like give us a talk or presentation about vulnerability assessment. So uh, definitely you can ask, just maybe we can make the questions at the end of the presentation, if that's okay with everyone. And um, I let Sanas start by introducing herself. Thank you so much for joining us, Sanas, today. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sanas and uh, Right now, I'm a senior information security analyst at the TD Bank in Toronto, and I did my master at University of Guelph uh, in computer science, and my thesis was focused on um, attack detection and attribution in industrial control system. Uh, before joining to the TD, I have one year experience with the CRA, which is a stand for Charles Rivers Associates. It is one of the consultant firm. Um, it is more like the um, EY, uh, you know, uh, KPMG, those kind of uh, companies. And uh, before coming to Canada, I had a chance to work for four years at the CERT lab. Uh, we had a different types of the project, academic one and industrial one. And uh, yeah, and I had a, um, also background in machine learning, deep learning technology and applying for the threat intelligence feed and um, etc. And thanks for the VCs uh, University of Windsor's to having me and inviting me to have a, a a little chat, I would say, about uh, vulnerability assessment, which um, I had uh, this opportunity to work uh, with CRA and had a couple of projects uh, about uh, vulnerability assessment and also used uh, um, Tanium, which is one of the vulnerability management tools these days, and it's growing, so we will discuss about that one as well. Um, OK, I think we can start or you want me wait for two more minutes. I think you can start Sanas. OK, awesome. OK, um, let's see at the first point. Uh, talk about vulnerability, threat and risk and what, what are the like difference uh, between them? I'm pretty sure that uh, you know that when we say a system has a kind of vulnerability, it means that the system has a kind of weakness. But uh, in a wording, we can say vulnerability is a kind of weakness or a gap in our hardware, in the software, or it can be even in our environment. But when we say threat, Threat is anything that can exploit those vulnerability. Uh, it can be intentionally or accidentally and cause the damage uh, to our assets or our environment. And then we have another terms, which is risk. And risk, it's a uh, potential uh, for loss or damage or any disruption uh, of our assets when uh, trades um, take uh, advantage of those vulnerability. These three uh, terms, they are so like I would say similar to each other, but it's good to know uh, which of them, uh, what's, the, what's the meaning of the which of them. But uh, when we said about the vulnerability assessment, it means that um, there is a kind of uh, systematic view of security weakness in uh, any information security system uh, or any system or any environment. It means that they are going to evaluate if your system is, ha is or if your system have a kind of potential uh, vulnerability that may cause uh, damage in the future. Um, they 
assigned a kind of a score uh, for the vulnerability if they find anything which is called severity score or severity level and based on those score they prioritize their task in terms of the how they can uh, remediate or how they can answer or uh, fix those vulnerability let's see why we need the uh, vulnerability assessment in our systems Let's think about it. If uh, there is a kind of vulnerability in one of your system and you don't know about it, what would happen in the environment uh, or uh, what would happen if somebody take advantage of those uh, vulnerability? So we have two, two scenarios here, uh, in my opinion. It depends on the, the company or the environment. If you are located in uh, critical sectors, which critical sectors are healthcare systems, uh, power, uh, like uh, grids, or uh, financial institutions, those kind of uh, environment or a company we call critical uh, infrastructure. If you are located to those kind of uh, infrastructure, so it would be so dangerous because it affects uh, with the sensitive information that you are dealing with. But in the other scenario, if you are working or uh, you are having a position in a small business, like let's say, um, I don't know, um, a small uh, shop uh, or a small restaurant or whatever it is, if the system or part of your system has a kind of vulnerability, it may affect just one computer or one endpoint. So in some cases, maybe it's not the damage if happened, it's not big deal, uh, but let's say in the critical infrastructure, it was a huge effect, effect uh, to those, uh, uh, I would say business or a corporate. So this isn't necessarily, uh, I would say, part of the security that every company have a vulnerability assessment. It can be a tools, it can be a person, it can be documentation. So they need to have it in order to prevent uh, something bad happen to those uh, environment. Let's see <clears throat> what type of the vulnerability uh, assessment we have. Our assessment can be, uh, can be a host assessment Host assessment, it means that it's going to evaluate uh, or I would say scan the hosts or servers and try to find any vulnerability or any, um, any vulnerable uh, pieces that may cause an attack um, or any tested uh, that may cause an attack uh, to that uh, image of the machines. And also we have a network and wireless assessment, which is a part of the vulnerability assessment. This kind of assessment uh, basically try to find uh, policies and practices to prevent unauthorized access to the private or public networks uh, that you have in your resources. We have another uh, assessment, which is a database assessment. Some people put the database assessment in the like subsection of the host assessment, but I would prefer to like uh, put a kind of another category for that because some uh, organization, or I can say even these days, most of the organization, they are uh, moving to the big data uh, and uh, for their data sets. So it would be, you know, the new scenario. Um, yeah, for the database assessments, uh, it's basically uh, go for the any misconfiguration or uh, try to finding or identifying any insecure um, development or testing or classify, try to finding if uh, any like, again, misconfiguration in uh, sensitive data uh, across the organization or the data sets. And also we have an application scanning uh, for the part of the vulnerability assessment. Uh, 
basically uh, it's going to uh, go through the web application and their source code um, and to find uh, out any um, dynamic uh, any maybe malicious code maybe find out or if there is any gap there so they will find out it can be automatic or it can be uh, like I would say manually happen. For the vulnerability assessment, we have a process for that. At the first point, when we want to start, we need to identify the vulnerability. After finding that, we need to analyze it and then uh, calculate the risk of those vulnerability and then try to find a kind of solution to remediate one. And it's very important to make sure that uh, the, this, this is not a one cycle. This is a cycle that every company, I would say, they need to have a kind of time frame for that and they have to like redo it, let's say every six months, every three months, it depends. For example, you know that recently, I think that was the last week on Wednesday, Microsoft released a new uh, zero day attack or zero day uh, vulnerability. And so all of the company around uh, who find out that they are using those services of Microsoft, they uh, run a kind of assessment for their systems uh, to find out if um, their systems may affect uh, those uh, vulnerability or not. So maybe uh, it is not during their uh, time frame that they have to run uh, those vulnerability assessments or those scanning, but when something like this released and uh, you are working in a very big corporate, you have to run it immediately. It doesn't like that. Uh, even even if it's during the midnight, you have to do that. It is not like that. OK, it's midnight and I don't work uh, right now, so I will check it like tomorrow. No, it's not like that. You have to take an action immediately because you're dealing with the lots of endpoint. And uh, let's just think about it. If you had it, those kind of, um, I would say, um, uh, fault in your system or uh, those kind of breach happen, uh, how would affect the company? So it's a very bad for the reputation of the company. So you need to take an action. And uh, in some cases, uh, it does not like make sense that you have to wait uh, for the cycle to do it. Let's uh, go a little bit deeper uh, for each of those uh, process. When we said vulnerability identification, basically the objective of these steps is to uh, have a kind of comprehensive list of all applications that you have and uh, then scan uh, those ones. It could be application, it could be a software or uh, anything that you have. It depends which type of vulnerability assessment you are running in your environment. So after um, finding or after like having or creating those lists, security analysts test the security health of those applications or servers or, or, or the other systems. How they can test it? They scan it with the automated tools that they have, or in some cases, they are uh, testing with the uh, manually, uh, with their like, manually manner. And um, basically, analysts in this case uh, rely on uh, vulnerability uh, databases. They some point they uh, rely on the vendor uh, vulnerability announcements or even uh, asset management systems and uh, in some cases threat intelligence feeds to identify any security weakness in their environment. For the vulnerability analysis, which is the next steps of the process, the objective of these steps is to identify the root cause of those vulnerabilities that we have already found out in our systems. Um, in this case, it involves the identification of system components 
who has a kind of uh, responsibility for each of those vulnerability. And for example, um, the root cause of the one of the vulnerability could be an old version of an open source library. So in this case, you need to provide a clear patch uh, for that. It means that you have to upgrade those li uh, library. In some cases, uh, you may find out uh, the software is outdated or even um, the not even outdated, but also it is not supported via the vendor anymore. So you need to take an action there. We need to remove it or uh, find another solution uh, for that. The next is step is uh, risk assessment. Um, the objective of um, this step is to prioritizing of the vulnerability. Uh, it means that, OK, we know, let's say we have those kind of the vulnerability and also we assign a kind of a score for that. Um, in terms of the scoring, we some some systems evaluate with the critically medium and low. Some some systems evaluated with the high, medium, and low, uh, but uh, both of them works in the same way. Let's say that your system rank a kind of severity score as a high. It means that you have to prioritize those. Uh, software, those systems or database uh, in order to take an action and uh, do a remediate part. Um, so uh, for the risk assessment, we um, to gave them a kind of those score to them for the risk assessment. We, you can also ask some questions um, in terms of the OK, if we have this vulnerability, which systems uh, may be affected, may be affected. Uh, what kind of our data is at risk? Are they like sensitive information or are they um, information from the customer, information from the credit card, uh, information about our patient, or are they the kind of information that's um, it's normal information? It's not like a big deal. And also you can answer the question about uh, which business function are at risk. Are they uh, located, let's say, in the IT department, uh, those kind of vulnerability, or are they located in the financial department? and uh, how you're going to deal with that. You know that each department has their own, uh, again, uh, I would say scenario. And let's say if you want to narrow it down, let's say for the IT department, if you find a vulnerability in IT department, uh, then you have to narrow it down and find out, OK, which part of the department may be affected? Is it a CSOC? Is it, uh, um, I don't know, is it uh, just a help desk or or etc. So you have to find out what part of the organization maybe uh, have a kind of, uh, you know, thread. And uh, then from that you take an action. And also you have to find out um, how the attack maybe happened. It would be difficult or it would be uh, like uh, easy uh, to get access to those systems. And uh, severity of attacks also uh, needs to be considered. It means that if attack happened, uh, it could be a um, ransomware attack. It means that that just encrypt the whole the, um, our endpoint and uh, you, you can access to anything else or they can just uh, send the kind of malicious, uh, let's say link, or uh, it could be kind of phishing attack for us. And it's based on the awareness of those person who wants to click on that or not. So you need to know the, about the severity of attack uh, as well. And also what's the potential of damage as a result of vulnerability? It means that, OK, if a loss, if the attack happened in the worst case scenario and if the severity, let's say critical, uh, what what would affect our company? Let's say again, if they targeted the admin of your uh, IT department and the severity is like critical and uh, the admin of the IT department is like uh, servicing to a 
let's say 8,000 endpoints or 8,000 users. So you can think about it, uh, how, how it might affect it. So it basically, you'll lose lots of your uh, systems and uh, it's, a, it's a huge impact. So uh, for the risk assessment, uh, of course, most of the company, they have a, a spreadsheet and also they have a, a documentation for that. They analyze uh, different sectors and also different departments of their company and they put, uh, put a kind of um, estimation for that if the risk happens, how they, they can take an action and etc. And just so you know, for the risk assessment, uh, it needs to again reevaluate in this certain time frame. Why it needs to do uh, to do that? Because let's think about it. You uh, the organizations are growing, right? If if think about it, if some part of the organization growing or you add new, let's say, assets to your organization and uh, you're not in a time frame to reassess it and it's it's just be there. So how you can uh, make sure that you are not in a dangerous if that is specific assets compromise, right? So again, you need to have a kind of time frame to make sure that all of the assets uh, of your uh, organization uh, have a kind of risk assessment and already done in all of the assets of the company. And the last steps uh, for the uh, vulnerability process is uh, remediation. Uh, remediation, uh, it's obvious, and that's uh, the objective of uh, these steps is the closing of the security gaps that you have already found out, how it can happen. Um, again, uh, maybe you find out uh, uh, a specific, um, let's say, software or uh, a specific part of your organization, uh, they are missing something. If this is a software, you have to find out how to install the patches for them. And basically, if um, big big company, let's say Microsoft, Adobe, um, those kind of organization, if they find a kind of vulnerability about uh, any services that they have, they usually announce it. And after a while, they release the patches for you in order to update uh, your software to fix those, uh, uh, you know, vulnerability. So you have to make sure if you are using those kind of services, you have to make sure that you are using the last version of that. And uh, some some cases you need to upgrade, uh, upgrade or update the configuration that may change uh, in some part. Or uh, if there is any security procedure that announced that you need to take an action from that. But basically, how can it help uh, for the organization? It helps to them to be more safe. Also for the remediation part, uh, we are all, all of us are human. When we are going to uh, run the patches, let's say for the easiest uh, example, run the patches uh, in the whole uh, our infrastructure, uh, you may miss one or two, one or two endpoints. In somehow, we, we are not like going to say, okay, it's like uh, intentionally happened. But anyway, if you miss those ones, uh, which they may be uh, just normal users, uh, still you are uh, you are dealing with the vulnerable environment. This is the whole point of having a time frame, even for the vulnerability assessment, risk assessment, and even for the remediation. After this process finished, you have a kind of picture uh, of the organization, uh, not even which department is like growing because you will have all those dates and etc and also you find out okay for this round of our assessment uh, we have seen that financial institution department has the most of the vulnerability so we need to uh, let the IT department know uh, that hey uh, just uh, after remediation finished I mean 
just uh, make sure that all of those systems, um, um, they are safe, they are fixed, and if anything's like added to those department, please take an action first. See, uh, these, these kind of the decision, it depends on the manager of the department or a company or um, even, uh, let's say, security department, but uh, still, you can have like a couple of eyes on those departments if you have seen some, um, you know, a vulnerability there in advance. Also, uh, up to now, we know how the process is, uh, what type of the vulnerability we have, and now we are going to talk a little bit more about the tools uh, that we have out there. Uh, we have, uh, we can categorize the tools in the three parts. One of them is the web application scanner that can test and um, simulate the attack pattern for the web application. It can test and scan the code, source code of their application and find a vulnerability. The second one is the protocol scanners that can search for uh, vulnerability in the protocols, that the ports and the network services, uh, or even the network packets that you're uh, dealing with. And the last one is a network uh, scanner that can help to uh, have a kind of visualization or visualize map of your network. And uh, it can uh, find out any uh, warning signals, uh, any spoof packet or any suspicious activity um, in your uh, environment. So we know how the process is up to now. We know that there are a bunch of tools out there that the most of the company use those tools, but in a broad view, we can say we need a vulnerability management as well. We cannot divide the company with the web application, networking, and let's say uh, software applications. So all of those parts, they together they create the whole infrastructure of the company. So we need another level of the, we can say some sort of security to provide a kind of management for all of them. So the vulnerability management appear in this context. It means that we need a kind of tools or we need a kind of uh, process to can identify, to evaluate, to uh, report uh, us about the security vulnerability, and it can run around uh, or in the whole uh, of our environment. Uh, so basically I can say that the tools that we have out there, they are working on the vulnerability management part rather than the just doing kind of process. Yes, of course, you can use the part of the tools uh, just for the web applications. Maybe you have already had another tool for the networking and you're happy with that. Uh, but if you have all the modules or all the tools in one package, it would be uh, kind of benefit uh, or an advantage for the uh, a benefit for your company. Why? Because it, you have to pay for all the tools that you are like using those using uh, for your environment. Um, I try to provide some of the um, vulnerability products, uh, vulnerability assessment or management products that we have out there. Uh, some of them, they are uh, for their own uh, company. I mean, they are using internally and some of them, they is, there are like some sub subscription for that. So, uh, and you can buy them and, um, uh, use those tools in your um, environment. Uh, what I choose from these products for uh, go in a little bit in depth and find out how uh, those kind of products are working in an actual environment is uh, Tanium. Tanium is uh, one of the platform that recently um, I would say developed and um, it's uh, growing as well. I can see that each year they are adding new modules to the Tanium. 
um, it's the kind of endpoint with the it's a kind of uh, platform that gives you a lots of modules in order to find uh, any risks uh, in order to manage um, your environment. It gives you a kind of visibility of your environment and how how the users uh, or your endpoints they are talk to each other and etc. So. Uh, Tenium, um, it's a one platform, but can works in a different uh, section. It gives you a kind of idea about the operational part of your organization. Uh, if you are under risk and it can provide you a kind of report report about the security as well. Uh, it's a kind of platform that who are working in the real time visibility and controls. You have an option uh, with using Tenium to uh, have a broad idea or the broad uh, side of the whole organization. Mm, it helps you to find out um, um, like if any like vulnerability or the patching patching mis misses uh, in the software or even um, new vendor release new patches it can shows you and also it works with the compliance as well and uh, some part of the tenium works for the um, threat huntings and uh, risk assessments and etc it's a very powerful platform i can say but how it works tenium the main part of the tenium uh, consists of uh, sensors Sensors are the main component of the Tenium who gather all information from the endpoint and they then it returns all those information to the Tenium servers. And also uh, those sensors, how we can use those sensors, we can create questions uh, in Tenium. It means um, that, uh, mm, let's say, you know how the SQL query works, right? So. The questions in Tenium, they are more likely SQL queries, but it depends. Uh, but um, in the SQL queries, you can add a table, drop the table, uh, and etc. But here, uh, what we are dealing with, just showing the data. We are not going to add or like uh, remove something via the, um, I would say, uh, uh, the question that we are going to be asked from the Tenium. And also, by default, the Tenium has some safe questions and uh, which uh, they work with the sensors as well as just for the easy, easy part to use. You can just run those safe questions in your environment and have a, um, I would say, a view of your, um, whatever the, your target is. And also we have a package. Uh, the package uh, basically contains of um, set of uh, in structure in order to changing uh, endpoint behavior. When we when we are like going or when we run any uh, questions, it can touch sensors and it can touch uh, packages as well. It can use both of them. This is a uh, dashboard of the Tenium. It, this dashboard is not new. Uh, it's a um, it's not uh, up to date, this dashboard, but uh, recently in terms of the modules, you can see all of these parts of these dashboards. They are the modules that Titanium use. They have interact, assets, deploy, integrity, discovery, trends, and also they, are, they add more modules here for the uh, providing uh, different types of the security in your environment. We were going to walk through some of those uh, modules, which is important uh, for the vulnerability assessment. Uh, in my opinion, two important modules in Tenium, they are Intract and Assets. Um, basically, for the Intract, it's going to um, ask you questions. This is a dashboard, I would say, of the interact modules. You can see you have a place for the explore data that you can write the question. The question is already written here. Get online from all machines. So it's a simple, right? It means that you can find out what, what kind of or which 
of your endpoints. Now they are running in your environment. It will give you a kind of chart about uh, how many endpoints now they are running uh, in the environment. You can have a query like uh, get um, computer name and operation system from all machines. It will give you that all of the endpoints with the computer name that you assign to them and also what type of the OS or operating system already run uh, on them. Uh, you can see how, how you can generate the questions. Uh, I mean, how you can generate the comprehensive questions to have a, a very good view of what's going on in your environment. And the other section uh, that you can see at the bottom of the explore data if you are a beginner who wants to use uh, the interact modules, it can give you access to build the question step by step. It means that you can add the different sensors uh, in the question builder. And then uh, on the other side, um, it's not in this picture. On the other side, it shows the query, how, how it works or what type of a query it would be after selecting a specific sensors. And the other side of these pictures, you can see the save questions that uh, those types of the question already saves uh, in the Tanium. And also when you generate the uh, questions, you can save it as well uh, in the Tanium as your reference. And uh, let's say next time when you want to have a idea if a part of your company growing uh, or already growed, you want to have an idea how many endpoints added or how many endpoints now is running. So you can use uh, those safe questions from here and just run it. There is no need to think about it. Oh my God, how was the query? How I have to write it? I can't remember it. I didn't touch the Tanium for like uh, a year and etc. So you have already saved all those questions uh, and it's easy to use. An asset is another module, and basically it works with the hardware and software assets in there uh, in the enterprise. As you can see, it shows you um, or for for these pictures, you can see it's uh, they have a 9000 um, application which already installed 9151 application which already installed in their environment. And you can see the version of the application here, who is the vendor and what's the name of the application. Uh, maybe you think about it, how this one can help us. Not only with this report, you can find out if any application are outdated, but also you can find out that uh, what type of application or which application installed in your environment. Let's say, if you find here in this report uh, some gaming application and you are working in a hospital, so why game application is supposed to be in our systems? So it is a red flag or it is a kind of, it causes a vulnerability uh, or, or a kind of threat for our environment. Or uh, you may, uh, I don't know, you may uh, run a kind of remote uh, um, um, access um, software or application in your system. You shouldn't do that if you are, you shouldn't like, uh, it shouldn't be there if you're working in a healthcare uh, institution or um, healthcare sectors. So with this report, you can have an idea, uh, not only the version uh, of the software that you installed, but also uh, what type of the software that you have in your environment. In terms of the security modules, Tanium uh, has uh, three different uh, modules for the security, impact, integrity, monitor, and reveal. We are going to talk a little bit about each of them and see how they work. This is the impact module of the Tanium. You can see in these examples, they have a, a 100,000 endpoints and uh, with the 120,000 uh, uh, users. And you can see the critical point of uh, this, yeah, this, the severity or the impact of their organization. They have 151 critical uh, users who are in the critical uh, position. Uh, they don't have any high and they have some medium and low as well. How impact work? Basically examine Active Directory users 
uh, computer, uh, computers, groups, and group member, and fix the access administrator via the access rights that they have. You can see that we have a uh, indirect and um, criteria in inbound and outbound. It means that let's say the first user has uh, those kind of or uh, those number of the connection with uh, like uh, users. Uh, for sending something to them and then for receiving from them. So, and you can see that um, the first user, Amber, has four sessions open. So, you have to take an action and make sure these user, if it's not supposed to be admin of the system, why they get access to those kind of, uh, you know, sessions and why they have like such as inbound and outbound, uh, let's say, uh, conversation with the other users. So you can see that you can even um, find out how many users may have an uh, impact in your organization and you can take an action. You can find by clicking uh, of the, each of users, they will uh, kind of chart or the map uh, will pop up and it shows you, let's say, Amber as a connection with uh, uh, like Cindy and Cindy is an admin and then admin have a connection and etc. It's a very powerful module in Titanium. And also we have a uh, integrity monitor modules. Basically it's monitor sensitive files and directory for uh, the compliance. It depends on again the organization, what type of the compliance are you running in the uh, environment. It can be a PCI, it can be a HIPAA or uh, whatever the organization sector is located. How it can work? Uh, integrity monitor has some watch lists which define um, a set of files or directory that you want to, uh, um, I would say, monitor uh, them for any changes. And then uh, the monitors um, modules uh, run to deploy those watch lists to each of the endpoints and then uh, start uh, to record and the records will continue during the process. And also in the monitoring, uh, or integrity monitor, you can add some rules uh, for your monitoring and um, it means that uh, you are going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to auto label those servers with the critical servers and they are low level and etc. You create a rule and the integrity monitor as well. And the last module for the security is the reveal. Uh, reveal is, uh, I would say, the next module after um, integrity monitor. It helps you to continue your the monitor. It helps you to scan and manage your sensitive data on the, your endpoint, but with using the indexing. Um, what it means? It means that Tanium um, index can index the um, the records of the file location and uh, type of the file on each endpoints and then reveal scans uh, the context of those files uh, in the mm, discovered uh, index and also discovery is another modules that they are as you can see they are working together closely and then after the uh, scanning the contents of the file now it can scan the results if they are secured, if they are stored in a database and which database they are and what kind of the endpoints uh, that they, uh, they are dealing with. So let's see how um, these tools, I mean the Tanium or those modules can help with vulnerability management. Um, Tanium, as I talk about it and discuss about it in the first of our session, it will give us a um, complete visibility uh, and it helps us to control uh, as well to identify and remediate compliance and vulnerability risk in our environment. How it can help us? It can run a vulnerability assessment uh, via the comply module. And then after that, it tries to identify a vulnerability. After 
uh, finding of the vulnerability, the patch running to target those endpoints in order to update uh, the patches and etc. And also uh, after doing this, you can set up a trend. A trend is another module of the Titanium in order to uh, monitor uh, those patches in your environment. You want to make sure that the patch is running and uh, they installed and uh, the vulnerability fix. So we said that the, for the first part um, of the vulnerability management in uh, Tenium, they run the assessment via the comply, uh, vulnerability assessment via the comply module. Well, let's see how comply work then. Um, for the comply, um, Basically, uh, you need to uh, add a kind of a standard to these modules. What kind of the standard you are going to evaluate uh, your um, environment? It, you are going to go with, the, as I told you, with the HIPAA, with the PCI, or uh, you are going to with the CIS. Uh, what kind of the comply or standards are you going to follow to identify any vulnerability? After uh, finding um, um, after finding those kind of standards, uh, you can run uh, comply and it will uh, happen real time uh, in your environment and it will walk through all the endpoints and uh, at the end it will give you a kind of report and you can export those reports from the Tenium. The export or the output of the Tenium is a kind of Excel spreadsheet and uh, you can start uh, your, I would say, analysis uh, from there. This is how Comply module looks like. Uh, you have and you want to create an assessment. You will uh, open the Comply module and then uh, um, hit the assessments and you can see that uh, you can run the compliance vulnerability or remote vulnerability and also create assessments. In this case, they create assessments. As you can see, they have a CVE 2019 with a specific code associated to that and they run it uh, for the whole environment to see if they have it or not. This is the kind of report. Uh, of the vulnerability section of the comply. As you can see that uh, it was run for the um, CVE in 2019, 2022, and 2021, and it will give you uh, different types of the vulnerability that you may have across your environment with the high, medium, and low. And uh, this is the CV ID that you can see. If you want to change the report with the endpoints, uh, you can walk through the, go to the next step, which is the endpoints. Uh, or if you want to find out, let's say CVE, 2020-70029, what kind of operating system they targeted, so you can go to the operating systems and etc. And also you can see for the first um, uh, bar chart, uh, the column of the bar chart, uh, 11 endpoints affected. For the second one, again, 11 endpoints affected and uh, with uh, uh, high severity. So as you can see, it will give you a, a very good idea and also you can get access to those endpoints and operating systems for the further, uh, I would say, investigation or the remediation as well. And we have a, a patch uh, concept as well as uh, we talk about it. Patch basically works with the software. Uh, it can be uh, like Windows or Linux patches as well. For the patches, we have a different section. We have a also block list. Uh, block list, uh, it's a group of patches that might exclude from your report or the, from the uh, test and also we have a uh, deployments um, component in the patch. Uh, it means that uh, you try, it helps you to configure the option in order to when and how patches they're going to install or uninstall in your environment. 
we have a deployment uh, templates. It means that you can uh, save uh, those deployment setting that you can use uh, in the future. Uh, you have a scan management. It will be uh, scanning all endpoints in your network, and also it will shows you uh, if there's a kind of error uh, while the, um, scanning, and um, those error targeted uh, or comes from which endpoints. And also we have a maintenance windows for the patches, uh, which um, basically uh, permit when the patches are uh, deployed and then uh, you want to see uh, when the next run will happen. This is a picture of the patches uh, that you can uh, see from the patch module in the uh, Tanium. As uh, you can see, they have uh, like um, 16 uh, endpoints which was uh, targeted with the 2020 uh, update for Windows uh, 10 uh, version with a specific CVE. And you can see what was the release date uh, as well, but uh, they, they were missing. And you can see how many items already uh, scanning. They scan uh, 1,796 items for the patches and it gives you what type of the patches are critical you need to take action you need to install them and what type of them important and based on uh, this severity you can prioritize uh, your tasks and this is the maintenance windows that uh, we talk about it uh, it helps you to find out uh, or set uh, what would be the next run of the patches uh, in your systems. You can set it for the monthly, uh, you can set it for the every six months and etc. And also you can set for the a specific timing that you want to start. You can see here it's a 10 p.m. which is a good timing because most of the system they are not using during the uh, night uh, other than the specific servers that you can exclude uh, those them, uh, those of them and do the patches manually uh, for for those types of the systems. And also you can put uh, like uh, repetitive. Um, you can see that uh, in this um, um, environment, they put a repeat basis on the second Tuesday of each month. And um, you can uh, see who issues and what's the last modify and uh, what's the platform that the patches are going to run. And uh, also we talk about the deployment uh, as well. Uh, deployment module, uh, it's uh, uses to install or uninstall uh, our patches on a set of the computers. Um, and also uh, you can uh, have a kind of a specific timing uh, for that. And also you can save the deployment setting, setting as well. But uh, the best practice for the um, deployment is uh, that you can create a separate patch list for the quality assurance and uh, your uh, production uh, for the deployment, uh, which is uh, very good. It means that uh, the whole environment uh, won't affect it with those ones. Let's say if you are working in the product environment and um, right now you cannot run the patches because uh, of the testing, but the whole system or whole environment or the other department, they have to run the patches right now. So you can create a separate patch for the, like, let's say, product department as well. It, is good. it gives you a, a kind of um, accessibility um, or flexibility um, as well. So um, that was the whole idea of the vulnerability assessment, how the organization can use it, um, what's the vulnerability and management, and I was trying to just introduce and walk through a little bit about the Tanium and important modules that um, it has. Um, I hope that um, this uh, presentation uh, was helpful for you and you have a good idea right now how um, vulnerability assessment works and what's the process of that. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. 
Thank you so much, Sanaj, for this awesome presentation. Uh, I hope also other guys like enjoyed it. And now if you have any question, can you just like open your like unmute your mic and ask? Uh, hi, Sana. So I have one question. So yes, go ahead. Uh, like uh, if some intruder is there in our network and like that intruder is just doing the eavesdrop. So is it possible for these tools to uh, get to know that there is some other like intruder in our network or not? Uh, if the intruder in your network, I would say uh, no, it cannot understand, but I would say in the other perspective, the intruder use the kind of uh, vulnerability of your environment to get mm -hmm. access to those ones. So in this case, yes, it can understand, hey, this vulnerability already there in your systems, it can detect it and then uh, you can protect it. And for sure, the intruder or understand that you find those vulnerability and you are going to take an action there. But in terms of the intruder already in your systems, I would say no, it cannot detect it. It needs a, like um, another techniques uh, like threat hunting or this kind of stuff in order to find out. So once an intruder comes to the like network and like after that the vulnerability is being like uh, removed from the system, then the intruder still will be in the network, right? Yeah, no, no, the intruder, yeah. it, it depends. Yeah, it depends. If the intruder get access to the second level, yes, mm -hmm. the intruder may be still in the systems, but if the intruder just uh, compromised, let's say just one system and they didn't have any lateral movement in your systems, mm -hmm. so uh, no, you have already uh, removed even intruder uh, from your system. It depends uh, how much they, they, you know, uh, they went in depth. Let's okay. say for the advanced persistent threat, you know that um, those kind of the groups, when they attack their uh, organizational uh, or um, like uh, systems or government systems, they are in their system for two or three years and nobody understand it. This is the whole idea of those kind of the attack because uh, they want to persist and they want to stay there without anybody understand that they are there. This is the new techniques. It's not new, but it's still they are using the new technologies to just um, get a new access or um, expand their, uh, I mean, their uh, access in their systems just in case if you find out some of the uh, some of them that they have already in their system, uh, still they can um, persist and in their systems because it's still they have uh, like 10, 10 more access, but you find just five of them. So. OK, so like uh, what does industry do to like uh, prevent this kind of scenarios? Oh, for the advanced persistent uh, attacks, it's a very complicated. Um, those kind of uh, attacks, uh, just for, for your information, usually uh, support with the government. They are a huge team. They have a different stage to get access and it's not easy at all. In order to how they can prevent uh, by, by this information, by scanning vulnerability, by running patches, by installing the last version of the software, they can, um, they can provide a kind of safe uh, environment in their systems. And you can, uh, I would say, uh, protect your system via. Maybe it seems so simple, but in the very big corporate, every this simple uh, point, they can get together, sit together, and if one of them missing, it will happen uh, a very huge impact in the company. And intruder will make uh, take uh, those advantage of those. Uh, vulnerability and get access to your systems. Exactly what happened with the Microsoft that I told you last week, they released a new uh, zero day attack and they release it with the, for the whole uh, organization. I mean, they announce it and ask the organization if they use those kind of uh, systems or services, please, uh, they, they give a, a kind of a manual point for now. 
walk walk through those services, change these configurations and make sure, let's say, from this one to be on, now you should be turned off and you have to run this command uh, in your organization to uh, just for now, uh, let's say, remediate uh, those kind of threat that may happen in your organization. And after a while, for sure, they will uh, publish and release the patches for all of us to install those patches and upgrade our services. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and one more thing, like uh, this uh, Tanium product. Okay, so like uh, it has a lot of uh, functionalities and features in that. So when we are running our system into that to check, uh, like uh, what kind of uh, bugs or issues we have in our system. So does it take time to like run everything, or like it's just like in fractions of seconds? Yeah, it depends how many endpoints that you have. Let's say if you have a uh, hundred thousand endpoints, yes, for sure it may take time. And but if you have just 25, 25 endpoints, you know, it would be like so quick. And also on the other side, it depends on the which module are you going to run. If you are running compliance uh, or patches in your systems, yes, it takes time because it wants to go walk through, let's say for the compliance, it, it, if it wants to check the CIS or uh, any CV that you have already uh, attached to the report, it has to touch every single part of your uh, operating systems to find any vulnerability or any, uh, you know, breaches that you may have. So it takes time for sure. Okay, okay, that's it from my side. Does anyone have any other question? You guys can write it down in the chat if you guys have any question, if you don't want to unmute yourself. OK, I believe that's all. Nobody has any question. So thank you, Sanas. It was a great session. And like, yeah, you shared a lot of information. No worries. I appreciate that. Uh, that you guys, I know it's a, like a, a long weekend for all of us. Thank you so much for you uh, that providing this wonderful uh, session and let me to uh, just share my information and knowledge with you guys. Uh, with all of you and uh, really thanks um, um, about your time and uh, listening to uh, my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Senaz, and wishing you and all the guys happy weekends. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. bye.